Hello everyone and welcome to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Uh, in this episode I wanted to talk to you about a particular project that, well, at this point in time I'm starting it. <laughs> um, but by the time this video goes up I'll have finished the project. So I was perusing Ravelry like one does on a dark wintry evening, sitting around the fire watching television, wondering what am I going to cast on and make in the new year. And so one of the things I found was a crochet cardigan. So um, I'm wearing a cardigan right now that I knit um, pretty recently and I just find that cardigans have a lot of wear and use in my wardrobe and of course I would love to have more and I'd love to have one that's crochet. Crochet was my first craft, well it was my first fiber craft uh, as a young child. My grandmother and my mother helped teach me how to crochet. And I did that for quite a while. And then I picked up knitting and I've been running with that craft for quite a while. So um, it's nice to have a little crochet. So the pattern that I found, and I'll put a picture on the screen, is called Oversized Cardigan. And it's a free pattern that you can download off of Ravelry. I'll have a link to that pattern down below in the description box, so if you want to go snag a copy for yourself, you can. Uh, so this pattern calls for uh, worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. Um, I believe on Ravelry it says Aran weight and then the pattern it says worsted. Not that I know the difference. <laughs> um, and so I went to my stash and I picked out this thing. I do like blue and like wearing blue. I have blue eyes and I have blue glasses um, and I wear lots of blue. This is Karen One Pound mm -hmm. and the colorway is Cape Cod Blue. Unfortunately I only have one of these which is not enough yardage for the pattern and I can't seem to find this color anymore in the store. Yeah. So I suspect that this color is now discontinued. Not that I have confirmed that, but I'm suspecting that to be the case. If I see Cape Cod Blue in the store again, I will certainly buy more because I like this blue. Um, it's almost like uh, a denim blue, so it's not a bright royal blue, it's not a dark navy, it's kind of something in between, a little more muted. So I'm not making my cardigan out of this yarn, simply because I don't have enough. So I went to the store <laughs> and I bought a different color. Um, I decided instead I would go with, there you go, tucking in the ends, red. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Some red. Um, I have a store-bought red cardigan. It's not very long. Um, but I do wear it quite a bit, and so this will give me a longer red cardigan to wear. Um, anyway, so it's Karen one pound, and I bought two of these. So it will be enough yardage. The colorway is Claret. I don't think it's pronounced Claret. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is a 100% acrylic yarn. It's worsted weight. Uh, in this big ball, you get 16 ounces. 
and that is about 812 yards. So two of these balls um, should be enough. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might be shy a little bit. I just double checked the pattern and yes I am shy um, 800 times 2 is 1600 yards and the size I'm making calls for 1800 yards so I'm going to need to go back to the store and get a third ball <laughs> that's hilarious because I had three of them in there and I bought two Wow anyway <laughs> I will do that um, yes so that's what I'm using the uh, hook size for the pattern is an H, and I did do a swatch, um, so I am using an H hook. This is a boy needle, B-O-Y-E. Um, I, I really prefer this tapered hook top um, with the little point on the hook. These are my favorite, so that's what I'm using. So I did a swatch with a G hook. Um, the, the size G is my favorite to work with. And um, my gauge was too small. So I went to H, which is the size called for by the pattern, and I'm getting the right size. So um, the squares should be six inch squares. And that's what I got. So I made a swatch in the Cape Cod Blue. I had already cut the yarn before realizing, oh my gosh, I don't have enough for this pattern. And I don't think they make more in the store. <laughs> um, so this is going to be my uh, original and reference. And then I went ahead and made another one in the red. And it's good to double check that gauge with the actual yarn that you're using. Even though these are the same yarn, supposedly, um, I bought this a year or two ago and who knows when this was manufactured um, some things could have changed in between there so um, yes it's matching up just fine with the previous square so we're good the way the pattern is written uh, what I need to do is crochet all of these squares and then seam them together there is a chart, uh, is chart the right word? There's a diagram showing uh, the arrangement of the squares to seam them together. And then a uh, border is crocheted around the edges. So around the neckline, there's written for crocheting uh, down the front, around the bottom edge as well as around the sleeves and the pattern does strictly mention very specifically that that crochet edge around the sleeve is a good way to add length to the sleeve if it's needed so it's nice that there is a built-in way to modify that for different shapes and heights and and lengths it looks like the pattern is written it's listed as multiple sizes, but really there are two. <laughs> so uh, half of the sizes will follow this pattern and the other half will follow this pattern. Because my size is one of those like middle sizes, we shall see how this goes. <laughs> I will take the liberty to modify things as needed. Uh, so I will let you know if I end up doing that. So it's been a few weeks since I started the project and I'm up to 22 squares right now, which is almost half the amount that I'm shooting for. And considering that I'm at 22, I believe half is 26. So four more squares will be halfway. 
I am still in the first skein of yarn and this this is the first skein of yarn I still have a lot left uh, if we compare it to a full skein you can see I have quite a bit here so I do know part of the project isn't just the squares but also uh, sewing the squares together will take some yardage and crocheting the border that goes all the way around all the outside edges of the garment so we shall see I just thought I'd be uh, further through this first skein at this point I'm not complaining I'm happy about it but I thought I would go ahead and start uh, connecting some of these squares together and uh, get a, a sense of the size and whether or not I feel like I need to make any adjustments mainly in the direction of adding more squares so I'd like to get an idea of whether or not the original 52 squares is going to be enough or if I think I might need to add some more in so I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to connect these squares using a method I found in, well, several videos here on YouTube, but I'll link to the video that I'm following along with in the description box below so that you can watch it for yourself. Um, but I'm also going to show you here me doing that technique. Uh, and what I'm going to do is join, um, so it should be four squares across for um, the back side of the garment. And then it'll end up being four squares across for the front. But I won't connect all four together because the front will be open. So I'm going to start on the back and start connecting them for the width so I can get an idea of how much I like the width measurement. Then later I'll start looking at the length. <laughs> uh, so that's where I'm going to start is joining um, four squares together to see if the width um, across my back, if four squares will be large enough for me. I think it will, but I think it will and I know it will are two different things so I'm just gonna go ahead and start connecting them and see what it looks like
So my very first go didn't look very consistent and even, so I ripped it back and redid it, and now it looks very consistent and even. So I'm very happy with that result. Yeah, it seems a little bit tighter as well. I think I was being just a little too loose with my chain stitches here. Uh, but, oh yeah, that's nice and flat on the back side. And it looks really beautiful. So I am going to take the next two squares and just continue with this chain. So basically, I'm going to be connecting eight squares together uh, to be four wide. So I'm just going to take this chain all the way across um, all four joinings so I can get the full width of the back side of the cardigan. joining the eight squares down the middle and it does look like it's going to be a good size so I'm excited about that uh, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to join squares um, this way because you can do this flat slipped stitch all the way across so I'm going to try to do that for all the seams, is just be able to go all the way across. So because the back of the cardigan, cardigan is four squares wide, I'm going to keep doing that, joining them across this way. And then once I get the height, I'll come through and join them along this way. So the, the flat slipped stitch that <laughs> will go vertically uh, will go over this slip stitch here on each of these joins. So you'll notice you can kind of pull them apart and there's space in between the, in the squares. Um, and when I come back through this way it will obviously close all of that up. So yeah I think I'm just going to keep doing this until I run out of squares or I reach the amount needed for the back side, which I think I think I have enough squares right now to do the whole back side of the card again. So I might just go ahead and do that and get an idea of how long this is. And yeah, I will just I'll just go from there. At this point I'm over the halfway mark for squares if I'm making the smaller size. And I say that because I'm just not confident that this is going to fit the way I want it to if I follow the schematic in the pattern. So I'm anticipating having to make adjustments, but 
before I put the cart in front of the horse, uh, what I am going to do is attach some of these squares to form basically the back of the cardigan, one of the front panels, and one of the sleeves. And so I'm going to attach those according to the schematic and try on one half of the garment and then determine whether or not I need more room in the sleeve, um, whether I want to make it wider, um, how is the neck line going to lay, and those kinds of things. And then that way, if I need to add more room, I can still do that. <laughs> uh, so I've attached um, 20 squares together for the back of the cardigan. And I've only attached them in one direction. Uh, because I'm using this flat slipped stitch method to join them, I really like the idea of just going over the entire length in one uh, chain. And so I'd like to be able to do that over the back of the cardigan, over the shoulder, into the front of the cardigan. Uh, so that'll be something I do later. But they're joined together enough that I can get a sense of the uh, length and width. So I have my back panel and I have one of the front panels, which is another 10 squares. And then these I'm going to join together with my six sleeve squares. <laughs> yeah. Um, so since this is a free pattern, uh, I feel like it's okay to share with you the schematic that I'm following. So I'm going to put a, a picture of that schematic on the screen. So you can see that there's um, four by five squares, 20 squares for the back of the cardigan. Each front panel would be 10 squares, two by five. And then the sleeves are six squares, two by three. Which looks great and easy and fantastic. However, I did measure, so these squares are six inches, right, on a side length. And so if there are two squares for the sleeve, so you fold it over, so this is the width of a sleeve, right? So the diameter would be 12 inches, which is two sides of the squares. And I measured my arm and at its widest point up here, uh, I, my arm measures 18 inches around. So 12 inches is not going to fit over 18 inches. <laughs> so that's part of me trying on one half of the cardigan is where does that joining of the sleeve to the, to the front and back panels occur? I don't think it occurs right here at my widest point of my arm. I imagine it'll be down a little bit further. And so my arm does get thinner, right? And so at some point in here, it is 12 inches around. Um, and I don't want the sleeve to be too tight like this uh, t-shirt sleeve. This is a cardigan I want to wear over my t-shirts and other layers of of garments so I do want it to be a little wider than that so I'm going to do some quick attachment and try it on to get a sense of possible modifications I might want to make so here's the idea uh, right here you can see the back of the cardigan so it's four squares wide five squares tall and what I'm going to do is take, let's say this here is the top edge for my shoulder. Then according to the schematic, this will join over here. And this is gonna fall off the table if I don't. 
Okay, so I'm going to join here, but not these two squares because it said to leave these unjoined. So that's a part of the um, neckline. So I need to slip stitch these squares together and then also the sleeve squares. So So basically I'm going to join these together using one big um, slip stitch chain uh, joining together the shoulder and down the sleeve. And then what I'll do is instead of actually joining together the bottom side of the sleeve together, I'll just pin them with um, safety pins or stitch markers or something. Uh, just so I can try it on and get a sense of the fit before actually attaching them. a tongue twister and now I just need to figure out how I'm going to organize this on the table so I need to join there we go like this and like this Here's where this project starts to get big. Okay. All right, so all I need to do is slip stitch these two squares together. Yep. And I suppose I could also slip stitch this as well. Yeah. That would make this a lot easier. So I think I'm going to do this and this here. <laughs> so I have it all kinds of pinned up. And while putting it on, a bunch of stitch, mar stitch, stitch markers fell off. Um, but I'm getting the sense that... Um, the neckline is going to be okay. I mean, we can talk later about this, but I think that's going to be okay through here. Um, I definitely don't have enough room here, but basically all I need to do is crochet, um, extra space in the armpit area, right? Um... I think two squares around is definitely good for my forearm. Like, it's a little tight around my elbow um, and definitely doesn't fit around my upper arm. So, I think uh, I, I have some ideas of how to handle this. 
but otherwise I think it's gonna be okay <laughs> um, the length is definitely not what they're showing on the model in the picture so I think I might want to add some length to this but before I handle that I think I want to handle you know how it all fits here first so yes modifications to come so it's about a week later and I've made um, some more squares and basically what I'm trying is I didn't like the neckline so uh, instead of the back of the cardigan being four squares wide I've made it five squares wide so that the middle square could be where my neck is and so the opening for the neckline and then that way the the sides coming up the front are more um, smooth coming across here instead of having a square as like a collar that folds over just I want it to lay flat so so the back come through on this bottom seam I want to take this out and add like one or two rows of some double crochets to just give me some extra thickness in here but with the back being five panels wide instead of four that gives me half a square here to hang over in this armpit area and stuff um, and then this will lay flat coming up here. So <laughs> there's nothing right now to hold this up. So it's hard to get a sense of like how wide this really is. But I feel like this is probably going to work better than the original design. So my hope is that, yeah, I'll be able to, yeah, just have this flat. I don't want a collar. I don't want a square right here in front of my neck to flap over as a collar. I just don't want that. So I think, I think this might work as a modification so what I need to do is I'm going to make more squares for the the other front panel over here and then start to get a sense of how wide this is <laughs> on my body and then um, figure out what I want to do with the sleeve modification. Um, I'm also sure not sure if I want it to be this long. I think I probably do, but we'll see once I connect these um, 
yeah okay I'm excited and I'm making good progress on this project so yay I, I am not convinced that what the model is wearing in the picture is what the pattern is telling me to make I just don't think they're the same thing so if I show you um, I'll scoot over I'll put a picture in of what the finished object looks like in the pattern the photos they supply and I'm particular I want to note the neckline um, the neckline comes down just straight right there's no collar <laughs> It's, it's flat, which was part of what drew me to this pattern in the first place. But if you look at the schematic, the back of the cardin cardigan is four squares wide, right? And the front is also four squares wide with just these two connected and these two connected, and it's open in the middle, right? And so you connect those four squares together kind of so the pattern tells you to connect these two um, and then leaves these two unconnected right so all four will come across the back the one square on each side will be connected but not the two in the middle but they come all the way up to the top so when I did that it made a collar opening because the, the top flaps of the squares had to go somewhere. And I don't want a collar. I just, I don't. And when you look at the model, it doesn't look like she has like a V joining here. It just looks all, all joined around the neckline. So, I've tried a few things. And... The first thing I tried was, well, what if I add an extra column down the middle of the back? So I keep the two front panels two squares wide, but I add an extra square in the middle for the back. So that could just be the, the width of my neck on the back. And so I could make the back five squares wide. And that was perfect for the neckline I wanted. It was perfect, but it was now five squares wide and it was too big for me. <laughs> okay, so I figured out that's the neckline I want. That's basically what I need. And so I thought, all right, let me take out that fifth column because it's too, it's too wide on me and I'll reduce it back down to four, which is just what I need. Um, and instead of creating both the front panels to be two squares wide, I'll make them each just the one square wide, and I'll do the rest with edging, right? And I'll just fill it in until I get the width I want. Well, that's a lot of the front of the cardigan not being the pattern. So I thought, no, I really like the two, like I need the two squares in the front to go around my body, right? Um, to go, f it's it's just around the neck that I don't need them. I'm still not convinced this is <laughs> this is going to be the final iteration of this, but um, so here's what I'm trying next. Um, what what am I looking at here? Okay, so here's um, let me just put this on real quick. And uh, maybe move the camera so you can see. Um, also in the pattern, the sleeve is written to be um, two squares going around. But my arm is too wide for two squares. So I made it three squares. So I did a quick modification, which is really easy to do on these side seams, to just allow for this third square for the sleeve. And now that that feels just perfect. Um, they're obviously not long enough, but I don't want my sleeve to be this wide down at my wrist. So I'm just going to crochet the rest and, and taper in. 
or do a puff sleeve. I don't know. Well, I got to tackle the neckline first, people, because I don't know what is going on here. So let me just um, move this camera so I can tell you what's going on. So here's what I'm trying next. You can see I want the two squares for the front and two squares for the front, right? And so what I've got is this is now two squares wide that's open here. Okay. So what all I've done is removed this top square from the front on both sides. And you'll see at the back here. Right. So there's part of me that's like Okay, now that I've figured out the sleeves, maybe I should put these two squares back and see how the neckline fits. But again, I don't want I don't want a collar, right? So my thought is that I can take this this square pattern and I could figure out a way to just crochet like this, a half square, right? And join this up here. But as I'm noticing, with only this one square to hold it up, I'm, I've lost so much structure here. Like this is really sagging. So I'm not sure that a half square on the diagonal is the right choice. Right, but it would give me a pretty nice neckline here. So then I was thinking, well, what if I could figure out how to do this pattern, but just have one corner missing, right? Like the whole corner at a right angle. And so just be this, these three, and I put that in here. So that way I can have space for my neck here without a collar. Because the pattern is saying not to attach these two, right? So this is in no way going to help with this structure here. Um, but if I could have half of this square attached up here, right, and just not have this corner, then I could possibly get the neckline I want. <laughs> Anyway, this is just turning into this huge thing. And look how long it is on me. And if you look at the pattern picture, it's like down by her knees. Um, so it's just not... The pattern is not correct. It, and by correct, I mean it doesn't match the photo that is provided.
I apologize for the lighting. It is evening, so the sun has gone down. It is dark. It's about uh, almost six o'clock in the evening. Um, so the lighting isn't <laughs> the best. I'm gonna get some glare off my glasses and, and whatnot. But I wanted to share with you that I figured out the neckline. So I studied the pictures and the pattern. I don't know how long I was staring at them and I was talking it out with my husband and, and uh, just the act of talking it out with him helped me realize, you know what? I think the model in the picture is wearing a neckline like this. And I said, you know what? I've put this thing together and torn it apart and put it back together so many times, then why not try one more thing, right? Um, before reinventing the wheel and coming up with a new partial square kind of thing. So I was having issues with the support, right? That if the squares weren't attached here on the shoulder, that it was just like really droopy and falling off my shoulders on the side and falling forward. And it just didn't seem like it had the structure to hold the piece together. And uh, so here's the deal. <laughs> Actually attach it there at the shoulder and just leave it open here at that seam where the two squares join. So my initial thought, and I love this neckline, but if I actually have a square open in the back, it makes for a great neckline. But I need an even number of squares, not an odd number. So instead of leaving a square's worth open, just, um, just join it completely across the back, right? Um, let's see if you can see that. Okay. Yeah. And see how it's wanting to open on its own, but basically the front is four squares wide. The back is four squares wide. It's just, they're only joined the two on each side with this open seam in the front. So when I put this on and I've, I haven't finished the sleeve yet. I did finish this sleeve. I'll show you that in a second. But look at that. That's all I had to do was just seam that up. So now it looks like the picture. Because if you notice in the pictures with the pattern, this seam isn't forward, you know? It's back. And so it was back because this here is up against her neck. So anyway, you know, there's only the two photos in the pattern, one kind of facing straight on and one that's like, you know, an artsy shot where she's on that wagon or hay bale or, or whatever. I can't remember. Um, so the schematic in the pattern does not match the pattern photos and the way they do not match is this here. So the schematic says only join these two here and then leave these unjoined, right? But you have all that loss of structure and all this gets pulled in and makes this collar thing, which wasn't in the picture. And I wanted the picture. So, um, so I figured it out. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> um, so I still need to come around with some double crochet edging and just work all around um, this front opening and the bottom hem of the garment. So I still need to do that, but that'll be the very last thing I do. Um, the other thing I need to do is finish this sleeve um, because it's not done. I'm currently in the process of weaving in all the ends. Um, so I'm working on that. I woven all the ends for the squares themselves, 
before I seamed them. So every square had two ends because you've got the start and the end, right? So I wove in all two of those ends for each square before seaming them together. What I'm weaving in now are all the ends from the seams, um, which with my intent wouldn't be that many, but because I've tore this thing apart, put it back together and tore it apart, put it back together, I have more ends than I thought I would, but that's okay. Um, and then I figured out um, the sleeve. So I have a finished sleeve here. Again, I need to um, weave in this end, but for now I'm leaving it. Um, I want to make the two sleeves match before I um, weave in the ends for this in case I need to make adjustments, which I don't think I will, but you know, um, I mean, maybe. I think it's long enough, but then I cinch up my arm, fold up my arm and this, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so this is one square on the sleeve and what I'm doing is going with two um, as a length here, which doesn't match the schematic. The schematic has you doing three, which I would do, except <laughs> I added a square to the width so that it would fit around my arm. Uh, but I don't want it to be that wide at my wrist. So I'm only going two squares deep. And then I'm finishing off with, uh, let's see if you can see that, with just double crochet in rounds. And I decreased. And then I picked up stitches uh, and I knit the cuff because I... I don't want the sideways crochet ribbing, you know, where you knit back and forth in rows, or sorry, crochet back and forth in rows to create kind of a ribbing. Um, I want actual ribbing. So let me take this off. This is nice and warm. I really like it. <laughs> um, so let me just support the weight of this thing. So here's what the sleeve looks like, right? So it's two squares in length. And then I just, um, I double crocheted all around. But in this first round, I went ahead and did some decreases. Um, and then the next round was just crocheting. And then the next round decrease. And so I alternated um, decreasing. And so it creates like this rounded shape because the way I was decreasing is similar to when you're making a hat, right? Um, and so I was following that technique. And then, um, and then I picked up stitches, whoops. <laughs> and I just did one by one ribbing in a knitting needle size. That was really similar to the crochet hook. I think the crochet hook is five millimeter and the knitting needle I used was 4.5 millimeter. Um, and I love it. <laughs> it's great. So I wouldn't have gone with this like rounded shape except that I needed to decrease over such a small section, right? Um, and I needed this extra width here for this, for my entire upper arm. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with it now. Uh, it's been a process, but yeah, so basically I need to finish the second sleeve, which I have the squares for. I just need to attach them and then do the, <laughs> where did that sleeve go? <laughs> do the crochet rounds to do the decreasing. So I'm gonna mimic this over here. Um, and the sooner I do this, the fresher this will be in my memory because I didn't write it down. 
yeah I didn't write it down so I'll need to copy this onto the other sleeve um, finish weaving in ends and then just crochet the edging on all these raw edges of the um, I want to call it a button band, but there are no buttons on this design, and I don't plan on adding buttons. Um, but yeah, this opening here, and then the bottom edge around the hem. Um, I'm still debating on whether or not to make this longer, uh, but I think I'm leaning towards leaving it this shorter length. But once I finish the sleeves, then I'll, um, you know, stand in front of a mirror and decide with the full sleeves on, does it seem like the right length or should I make it longer? Because it's hard to tell when you've got a partial garment what that balance is going to be on, you know, how, how heavy is this thing? Um, and yeah, so, oh, I'm so relieved that I figured that out. And I'll definitely be writing comments on Ravelry that, hey, you need to make these changes to this schematic. So um, I don't know if we can expect the pattern to actually change, but if you decide to make this, um, please note <laughs> uh, those changes. I have exciting news. <laughs> I have two finished sleeves and yes, my two ends are still sticking out here. So those will need to get woven in, but they both have cuffs and they are kind of like this <laughs> puffy sleeve thing going on. And I kind of love it. <laughs> Um, if I had to pick puffy sleeve, I never would have picked it, but I think it works okay on this cardigan. So, um, I wanted to finish the sleeves before I decided on the length of this thing because I wanted to get a sense of what would balance this garment out. But I also don't want this to look like, like a house coat or a bathrobe. <laughs> Um, if I was going to wear it around the house, then I would totally want it to be that. But my intention is to actually wear this out of the house, like to work or to dinner or to church. Um, and so I don't want it to look like a house coat. <laughs> I want it to look like a cardigan. So I think I'm not going to add any length to, the, to this. I think with the size of the sleeves... I think uh, it, it will balance it out to be the length that it is now. Um, so I'll, I'll move the camera so you can get um, a good angle and I'll show you. The cardigan does come down past my butt. <laughs> um, it does cover my behind and I, I do want that for this cardigan. Not every over shirt do I want to go that long but I do want this one to go that long and it does um I don't think I actually want it to go down to my knees like the pictures in the pattern originally that's what I wanted but this feels kind of bulky and so I don't know I don't think I want uh, a this to go down to my knees again I don't want it to feel like a house coat So basically that means all I have left to do is work the border. So I'm going to sit down and work some double crochets around the 
uh, edge, so this neck opening as well as the bottom hem. And I'm either going to do one row of double crochets, two at the very most. And yeah, I don't think I'm even going to finish it off with a row of single crochets. I think I'm just going to stick with double crochet um, because that's what's used in the pattern squares are double crochets. And that's what I use to extend the sleeve. So I'm just going to use double crochets. So I'm going to sit down and do that and decide whether I'm going to do one or two rows. And then that will be it. Ah, <sighs> it's finally finished. Oh my goodness. I started this thing in December. It is now February. So it took me about five weeks, six weeks to work on. Um, I'd say majority of that time was spent making the squares which you'd have to do for this project anyway. And some of the time was spent just trying to understand the pattern and how to put this together. Um, so I think now that I understand uh, the pattern, I think I could do this again. I could make another one in like a month um, if I really wanted to. <laughs> Um, at this point in time, I'm happy with having just this one cardigan. Um, you've seen through this video that it, there were points of frustration for me with this project. Um, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the, that the pattern is free. I appreciate that the pattern for the square itself was correct in the pattern. Um, but other areas were definitely frustrating. Um, for me, uh, creating the smaller size that was provided in the pattern made sense. But I think I'm fortunate that that size worked out for me. Um, if I were a smaller person, this would be definitely an oversized cardigan, like the pattern uh, says but could be maybe too oversized if I was, uh, if I have a, a larger body and I'm making the next size up. I mean, I don't know. Um, I haven't tested out all of the sizes. So if you're uh, following this pattern and making one for yourself, you might wanna be mindful of the fact that you might need to make some modifications to make the garment work for you. Um, overall, I'm, I'm very happy with this, uh, what I have created. I did decide in the end to just do one row of double crochet for the edging. So there's just one row along here for the edging. I didn't want there to be too much here. <clears throat> I find that my neck is very sensitive to having things touching it. I can't wear turtlenecks anymore because they really bother me. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to have too much going on here. So I kept it simple with one row and I think it looks really nice. Um, another consideration with the pattern is that I only use two skeins of yarn. This third one that I went back to the store to buy I never got into it. So <sighs> that makes me very sad. Very sad because now I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I will figure something out. I just, I was trying to buy the right amount of yarn. And initially, I only bought two skeins, and it turns out. That was right, but the pattern was telling me that I needed 1,800 yards. In the end, for this pattern, um, so there's there's the amount of yarn in this cardigan, and then there's the amount of yarn I used. <laughs> because I was trying to figure out this pattern and everything, um, it wasn't just 
following pattern, right? So <laughs> this is how much I have left from the second skein. This is about one ounce. In a full skein, there are 16 ounces. Because it's called Karen One Pound, right? It is one pound, 16 ounces. So I have one ounce left here that I did not use. Now, because I was figuring this pattern out, I did use a little bit more because I have four extra squares here that didn't get used in the pattern. And these four squares weigh two ounces. <laughs> so, um, I could have easily have used um, more yardage than I did, but this is the number of squares they called for for my size. But if these four would have been included, so I did calculations for both, is if I'm only missing the one ounce of this skein, then I used 31 ounces total, um, calculating yards per ounce and everything, that would be a total of 1573 so 1573 which is about 225 yards shy of what the pattern called for which isn't too bad considering you know pattern designers um, predicting a bit more yardage just so that they make sure folks have enough yardage when they're creating the pattern um, but when that means going to the store and buying another unit, whether it's a ball or a skein or whatever, um, that's kind of annoying, um, because I spent eight extra dollars that I didn't need to for this pattern. Anyway, if I take out these four squares and I don't count them as part of the yardage for this pattern, which I'm not going to in my annual total of yardage, um, then for this pattern I use 1,471 yards. This is a total of 29 ounces in this cardigan. <laughs> Um, yeah, in the end, I'm very happy with the finished object that I have. In the end, I'm glad that I didn't give up and that I solved the puzzle, the puzzle of the neckline. <laughs> um, I also figured out what to do with my sleeves, um, giving myself more room. You know, I, I stuck with it and I figured those things out and I definitely learned a lot in this project. Um, so I really appreciate that what I gained out of this is a finished object that I love, as well as a bunch of knowledge and experience. Did I have to struggle along the way and get frustrated? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the creative process. Welcome to the learning process. Yeah, this is par for the course and to be expected. Did I know going into this experience that I would be dealing with that? No, I th I thought the pattern was well written. I thought I really wasn't going to have any issues. Um, so I got blindsided there and I should know better. Uh, but yeah, I have this uh, project up on my Ravelry page with some notes. Um, I w I'm going to include on my project page... Um, the schematic that I followed <laughs> to uh, assemble my cardigan, which is going to be different than the schematic given in the provided pattern. Um, so if you are also making this uh, garment and following this pattern, um, feel free to use my schematic and my notes in this video as a reference <laughs> to go with this. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, I made it through and I'm really happy about that. So um, thanks for sticking with me through this video. I'm going to put in clips at the end here of me celebrating um, this cardigan. So you'll get to see me wearing it full length outside in the sunshine, um, as well as some pictures. Um, I appreciate you all and I can't wait to see you in the next feature video.
whatever project it might be. Who knows what kind of shenanigans I might be up to or frustrations I might encounter, but you'll get to see me try my hardest to work through them. Um, I appreciate you all. I hope that you will stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Until next time, folks, take care. Bye.